Hello, and thank you for joining me here today. My name is Laura Bishop, and I work as a technology integration specialist for Springdale Schools. This tutorial will get you started with Google Classroom. If you have any questions about anything we're doing today with Google Classroom or any other tool you're wanting to implement into your classroom, please feel free to reach out to me at lbishop at sdl.org. Before we get started, I would like to share Springdale's Google Classroom help and support matrix with you. It is loaded with resources, and I think as you begin to use Google Classroom, you'll find many of these are very useful. This matrix can be accessed on the tech integration page of our SDL website, but for your convenience today, I have included a bit.ly URL shortener. Keep in mind that bit.ly shorteners are case sensitive. If you will click in your URL bar and type bit.ly forward slash GCR dash help, you should see the matrix. From there, you may want to add it to your bookmark for quick reference. Google Classroom is an easy to use app that can help you streamline your classroom management. It will not only help you organize materials from your Google Drive, but because Google Classroom is open to third parties, it makes it easy to share lessons and activities from many of your other favorite tools like Edpuzzle, Flipgrid, Edulastic, Nearpod, Wakelet, Screencastify, and that's just a few of the tools that integrate with Google Classroom. With Google Classroom, you can also become more digitally organized. You will be able to post information to multiple classes, modify and reuse assignments from year to year, and Google Classroom automatically creates a folder for each class, and then within that class folder, it will create folders for each assignment. You will be able to communicate with students by posting announcements and reminders. You can monitor student progress and provide feedback. You can check with students individually to answer questions. You can keep parents and guardians in the loop by giving the option to receive emails about missing work, upcoming work, and other activities. Now that we know a little bit about Google Classroom and what it can do, let's take a look at today's agenda. We will start by accessing the Google Classroom and then creating a class. Then we'll take a look at the management settings and connect Google Meet to your class. We will add students, co-teachers, and invite guardians. Then we'll be switching between student and teacher view as we create an announcement, and then we'll also create an assignment. And finally, we'll turn an assignment as a student. Now we've got some help resources identified. We've got a good idea of what we're going to accomplish with this tutorial, so let's get started. I want to let you know that the Google Classroom app is available for download in both the Apple App Store and in Google Play. So what that means is you can access Google Classroom from any device. I already logged into my Springdale account and up here to the top right you will see a 3x3 three three grid and it's called the App Launcher. I'm going to select that and once I do I'm going to look for Google Classroom which I happen to have moved to the top and by the way in case you weren't aware you can arrange these icons how you prefer by just selecting and dragging. So once I find the Google Classroom app, I'm going to just select it once. And I come up to the Classroom um, dashboard. Now the other way that you can um, access this Google Classroom is through the URL bar. Just simply type in classroom.google.com. All right, so now we're here. If you're brand new to Google Classroom, this may be a blank slate. As to get started, we're going to create a class. I'm coming far over here to the right at the top. I'm going to select this plus sign. And when I do, I get the option to either join a class or create a class. I'm going to select create a class. And once I do, it says, what do you want this Google Classroom to be called? And I'm going to call it Google Classroom 101. And that's the only required field. So I'm going to skip the others now. Before we're finished, I'll show you how to edit that. Go to create and it will automatically select a theme for me, which um, has selected um, kind of a gray looking theme for me, an image here in the back. And this area, this square area with this image is called the banner. So if I'm not crazy about the image that's there, the first thing that I can do if I like is I can select a different theme and I'm coming way over here to the right and I'm gonna hit select theme. And it will come up with some of those that are already pre-constructed, some images by Google. And they've got a bit of a filtering system up here at the top. And I'm going to go to the math and science. 
And from there, I'm going to select, select this lavender one with the Erlenmeyer and the Florence flash. And then down at the bottom, I'm going to say select class theme. And it will immediately change that image for me. Now, let's say that I even want to get a little more personalized in my banner. I can also upload my own personal photo. And I can do that right here below select theme by selecting upload photo. And on my computer, I happen to have a image or spring dot icon that I've prepared. I used Google Draw because these images need to be a certain size. They need to be 400 by 1600 pixels. I'm going to just resize here just a little bit to include that. That's going to make it a little bit fuzzy, but not too bad. And then I'm going to say select class theme. Now, that was a pretty light image, but notice when it comes into the banner, it's a little darker. And that's dis by design by Google because that they are using a white text here. And they want that to continue to, you know, pop it, pop out. So I've got my name on this banner. I've got a class code. This is what I can use to for students to join. So I don't quite have a meet link for this classroom yet, but I'd like to have one because at any time that I want to have students join me, um, you know, at a distance or virtually, then I can just direct them to this link and they can find it easily. So I am going to say generate meet link from right here. And a little window pops up telling me, are you sure you want to generate this meet link? And I said, yes, I do. And when I do, it automatically toggles to visible to students so that students will see that. And I'm going to say, yes, that's what I'm interested in. And I'm going to save it. Now, just a little something about this meet. Um, this is unique code for this classroom only. Only your students could join from here. And they cannot join until you're on board. So unless you've started a meeting, they couldn't have a meeting be between themselves. You would have to be on board. And just like at the end of the day, when you leave your classroom, you'd never leave three or four kids in there. If you do go through a, a Google Meet here, I would make sure I'm the last one to leave that meet. All right. Now, once you've got your meet leak fixed, the next thing we want to talk about doing is have some students and some people join our classroom. So um, there's two ways we could do that. If you're in face-to-face, -face, really quick way would just be to display that. You can display it this way and you can make it even bigger one more time with one more full screen pop out. And the students could see that code. And just like you navigate up to the plus side and said, create a class, they could navigate to Google Classroom and say, join a class and put in that class code. So that's one way that you can get a student in your class. And the other way is if I come over here to the people tab, I can invite students manually. So here we've got the students column and I've got this plus over here to the right with people around it. So I'm going to select that because that's where I invite in students and I'm actually going to invite a couple of students. Okay, and I'm going to say invite. And what that will do is send them an invitation. And you can see they've been invited, but they're kind of a light gray here. And in order to interact with those students, they have to accept that invitation. So I have those two students in a different window right now. And what I'm going to do is pop over there and accept those invitations and show you how they can join. So here's my first student. And in his inbox, he had mail from me that says Google Classroom. Laura Bishop would like you to join. And all they have to do is select that join button and they will be in the classroom. The second one here, I'm going to show you how it's like we did. If you were using the code, you could have them go. This is the second student over to the app launcher, select Google Classroom. And from there, when they hit the plus sign this time, instead of joining the class this um, through their invite, they could type the class code right there. Now, I did not remember the class code, so I am going to come right back to the invitation, and I'm going to have this student go ahead and join really quickly, too. So we have, we have two students that we can look at in our classroom. Okay, so now we are back to the teacher view. And we have a couple of students now who have ex accepted our invitations. So now they're no longer grayed out and we can interact with those students. Um, this student has been in my class before or is in another classroom that I have. So I already have his guardian's um, email. But I want to show you if you don't have a guardian's email and you would like to, the way you do that is just simply go to invite guardians and start typing their name right here. And then you will send an invite to them. Okay. What that invite looks like is this. So they will receive this in their email. This is a guardian's email. And it will just say, um, L. Bishop, would you like to accept? Or, or they have the opportunity to say, hey, you've sent it to the wrong place. I am not the guardian. So it just tells them they've been invited and they can accept. Now, what they will see is just see updates to the classrooms. All right, so let's go back to the teacher view. Okay, here we are back from the teacher's view in the people tab. And from here I can interact with students 
as a whole group or individually by selecting these boxes. The actions you can take are you can email a student, remove a student, or if you need to mute a student from commenting or posting in the class, you can do that here. Also in this tab, if I take a look over here to the right, you will see these three vertical dots or more menu. If you select that, you can email a student. And from here, I can also email a guardian, invite another guardian, or a remove a guardian. Okay, if you want to share your materials with another teacher from this class, then you could do that by inviting them as a co-teacher here. You would simply select this and invite them through their email. Once they're a co-teacher, that gives them all the permission so that they can carry out anything in the classroom that you can. The only thing they cannot do is archive the class. All right, let's hop back over to the stream tab. The stream is the landing point for students and teachers when they enter Google Classroom. So let's start by making an announcement. Here it prompts us by saying, share something with your class. I'm going to just click there and I'm going to pretend I'm making a welcome here. And when I do that, I can add attachments. I could go to my Google Drive. Let's say I wanted to enter a class expectations doc. Maybe I had created a Screencastify as a welcome. I could insert both of those. I could also add a file or I could add a YouTube video. If I had the URL to the YouTube video, I could go ahead and copy paste that there. But I can also search without leaving from right here, search YouTube, select one and add that as well. Okay, so now I've got my um, announcement set up how I would like it with its attachments. And I can decide where I want to send that. Do I just want to send it to the class I'm in or do I want to send it to some of my other classes as well? Another option I have is I can send it to all my students or I can send it to individual students. Keep in mind that a student will only see what you post to that student. All right, now, when I get ready, I've got it like I want it and I'm ready to send it out. I can post it immediately. I can schedule it to post at a later date. It'll ask me the time and the date. Or I can save it as a draft and finish it up a little bit later. Let's just go ahead and post that now. Okay, so we're in the stream and we've created an announcement. Now let's look at going to classwork, and this is where we can create an assignment for our students. And from here, I could start a meet with the link that we generated earlier. I could view the Google Calendar, or I could go to Drive and view the folder that is created for this class. With the Create button, I have some options of creating an assignment. A quiz assignment would automatically bring up a Google form. I could just ask a question. I could post some material, or I could visit another classroom that I have and reuse an assignment from that classroom. This bottom one is the organizational piece for Google Classroom. And from here, I could add topics. Let's just say that I want to add a class resources. And I'm going to add one more topic, and I'm just going to call it, I'm going to give it a one, and I'm going to call it science. And these are rearrangeable. So if I want to keep class resources at the top, I could do that. Over here with the more button, it tells you some of the things you can do with those. I could rename it. I could delete it. I could actually copy it and share it somewhere else if I wanted to. And of course, then I can still move it as well. Okay, let's create an assignment. And I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to call it What Causes Types. Here I could give some instructions. And when it comes to adding attachments, I could add something from my Google Drive or I could add a link if I wanted. I'm going to show you a link. We haven't done that yet. You also have the option of creating a Google product without leaving Google class Classroom. I also want to add a document to this one that I want the students to respond on. It's called What Causes Tides. Select that and add it, insert it. Okay, so there's the document. Now, when you add a document, one thing to take note of is over here, you've got some options. 
So I can let a student view the file only, or I can let the student edit the file, which means I'm going to be in a collaborative effort. They're all students will be able to edit the same file, or I can create a copy for each student. So once I've got my assignment set up, I've got some options I want to look at. Do I want to just assign it to this classroom or do I want to assign it to another classroom? I can also use this as a differentiation tool because I can assign it to all students or one or a group of students. I can assign my point value and give it a due date and a due time if I wanted, which is optional. And I can get organized by putting this into one of the topics or categories that I've assigned. All right, I think I've got that set like I want. And once again, I have the options of scheduling it to post at a later date, saving it to work on a little bit later, discarding it all together, or go ahead and assign it now, which is what I'm going to select. Okay, and we can see it showing up there, what causes tides. Let's create some material for our class resources. Let's say I have a favorite website there that they are going to be accessing throughout the year. So I can just add a link to that website. And then the same thing happens here. I can assign it to one or all classes, one or all students. And I can also organize here. I'm going to put this in the class resources. Actually, let's pretend we forgot to put this in the class resources. And I'll show you how you can move it if that happens. So let's go ahead and post it. Now you can see the website came in here, not cat, not in a category or in a topic. All I have to do is click it and drag it and I can place it where I want it. All right, so we've got a little bit going on here. Let's hop over to the stream and see how this looks. So here we are in the stream. Here's our welcome and here's the assignments we just added. So anytime you add something, it adds to the top of the stream. When the students first access this, I would like them to see the welcome first. So what I can do is come over here and I have some choices and one of those is that I can move that to the top. So I'm just going to move my welcome to the top. So when the students come in, that's the first thing they'll see. All right. Before we go over to the student view, I want to take you over here to settings and give you some of the options you have for managing your class. So some of the things I can do in settings. I could edit my classroom details. Add a classroom description, add a section number, room number, subject. You can do that earlier. In the general tab, I could display my code. I could copy it. I could reset it if I had an ambiguous character, or I could even disable it. In the stream, I can decide if I want students to comment and post or comment only. In the classwork, I can decide if when I post classwork, do I want everything to show in the stream? Do I want both attachments and details, or do I want some condensed notifications, or do I want to hide those notifications altogether in the stream? This is if you wanted to show deleted items, you would toggle that on. And if for some reason you wanted to quit adding guardian summaries, you could do that here. If you'd like to see what's in a guardian summary, here's an example here. And it will tell you that it sends out missing work upcoming work and class activity. So let's save the what we have. Now here we are back at the stream and you will notice a couple of things have changed. This one has been added. That is actually the section code we added and also this drop down carrot has been added and it houses the subject, room and description. Now, let's pop over and take a look from the student's view. Here we are in the student's dashboard. We can tell this student has three classes. From each of these classes, we can tell things that are coming up. This one has says due Thursday is what causes tides. I could click here and go directly to that assignment. Down here at the bottom are a couple of icons. This one, if I click that, that would take me directly to the classwork for this class. And if I click this one, it'll take me to the folder for this class. From the menu, they could access their calendar. There's a convenient to-do list. I could filter that by all classes or just a select class. It gives you missing dates and due dates. There's also a done tab. 
which will show them any work that they've turned in. This will give them all the classes they're enrolled in. And down here at the bottom, you might want to direct students to the settings. From here, they can change their profile and they can set up to take email notifications. They can take email notifications on comments and class any classes they're enrolled in. If they only want to take notifications from a specific class, you can direct them here to toggle those off and on for each class. All right, so now let's go into Google Classroom 101, the one we've been working. Our landing spot is the stream. The student can see everything we've been posting for him. He can make comments in various spots because we've allowed posts and comments permissions on this classroom. The upcoming box is a bird's eye view of work coming due in the near future. The student can access that work there or if he needed to, he could access it here in the stream. Or if you wanted to access that same work, we could go over to the classwork tab and he could access the work from there. If he goes to the classwork tab, it'll give him his resources, but he needs to be sure to click down here on view assignment. So in this assignment, the student can see the title, the points value, the due date. Here are the instructions. Please review the website and complete the attached document. There's the link. Once he reviews that website, it tells him to complete the attached document, which can be found over here to the right. We have provided a template. He selects that, and he will see it looks just like the Google Doc he's used to. He can answer his questions. Up here to the right is a turn in button. Once he selects turn in, One attachment will be submitted. Gives him another chance to make sure he's ready to turn it in. But even if he's turned it in and he's decided, uh-oh, I needed to add something, he will still be given that opportunity with the unsubmit button. If a student wanted to turn something more than just the template in, they can do that from this add and create button. They could add something from their drive, a link or a file. They could actually create a new document, slide, sheet, or drawing from here as well. So I'm going to turn that in so we can see what that looks like on the teacher side. Asking me, are you sure? Yes, I'm going to turn it in again. Student can add comments here goes to the entire class. This is a private comment, so if you need to ask you a question only, you ask the teacher here. Now, I have to just make sure those are sent. I'm going to show you what happens if I don't send that. Let's say I try to go back out, and it'll tell me. Comments aren't saved automatically, so it gives them a little reminder. So I'm going to say cancel and say, yes, please send that comment. Now, let's go back out to the student stream, see what this looks like. We've got it all turned in. Now, in our upcoming box, it says, woohoo, no work, do soon. So this is a great reminder to students uh, to where they are in the progress of their work. All right, now let's go back to the teacher's view to see what this turned in work looks like. Here in the teacher stream, just like with the student, there are several ways I can get back to that classwork. I can access it through the upcoming box or here in the stream, either one, or in the classwork tab. So from the classwork tab, I can select the assignment. I can tell what students have turned it in. If I want to get a better look at the assignment, I can select view assignment. From here, I can sort students. I can sort by first name and last name, and I can also sort by status which means have they turned it in and how many still have it assigned. So I'm going to look at this document that has been turned in to us by just selecting it. You can see here's the student's work. So I can grade right here in Google Classroom without leaving. This little icon means that I'm in the grading mode. So I can come right over and give this student a grade if I like. 
And if I want to, I can now return that work. There are some grading features we were not able to get to during this session, but if you will join us for Google Classroom 201, we will dig a little deeper into those features. Before we go, I want to remind you that you can come down here to settings in this menu and you can control your email notifications there. You can turn those off altogether if you like. And now let's revisit our agenda. Looks like we accomplished what we set out to do today. Once again, I'd like to thank you for joining me and we will continue this tutorial with Google Classroom 201. Hope to see you there.